Yellow and welcome back to Rift Rivals Day 2. The 5v5s have concluded, but there's still the matter of who is the best in the West. The bot lane gold letter is formatted with each region being divided into two brackets. And gents, it's going to be a fun one. EU vs EU action. To kick it all off as NA's teams will face off against one another until one team's duel is left standing with the teams from EU doing the same. I like how they have set this up. First, we'll determine what the best bottom lane in each region mm -hmm. is before finally coming together to decide best in the West. Oh, yeah. And we're going to be sticking with the same rules that we have had so far throughout the two versus twos. You start at level one, you win by destroying first tower, getting 100 CS or getting two kills. And you can use recall while also being able to heal at the fountain. Outside of that, it's a no hole bars. Let's get some action. Should be certainly a lot of fun. And soon we will have the Commissioner Greeley and Rift Rivals Chaplain Romain bringing out the best in the West belts. Yeah, before then though, chatting a little bit. Uh, there they go. The belts are ready. <laughs> Pretty badass if I don't say so oh, myself. Oh, yeah, they look they real good. Cool. I mean, again, all about the bragging rights here. Who doesn't want to be called the best in the West bot lane? I have also been informed the winning team gets to keep those forever. They're dated. This is 2018. Damn. And you'll never have to give them up. But you guys can't keep them. Remain, put it down. Remain, <laughs> remain it's not yours. Put it down. All right, let's check out the lineups over here. Game one is on the EU side of the bracket, kicking things off for G2. It's Hyonin and Wadid. Oof, the powerhouse bot lane of Europe. Currently sitting in a 6-0 and zero record on the European LCS without playing a single AD carry. <laughs> They're trying to prove that AD carries are weak and it's the future of the mages. And for Spice here, it's Kobe and Kasing. In maybe a struggling tournament for them, but can still pull out some fun. They won though. their last two versus That's two. True. They have some creative strats planned, and I was talking to Kobe this morning. He was like, you know what? I still think we can win. We can still do Europe proud. And even if we struggle in groups, we can make up for it here. Yeah, I'm 100% rooting for Kobe, my namesake. He's really done me <laughs> proud in the marksman role. Uh, and, and I asked him if he was going to dumpster this dirty Heimer player. They said it's going to be banned, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> so a little insight into the pick and ban phase. Surprising, they may target Hyarnin. Well, we'll see exactly what we have here. But first ban is Zillion uh, for G2. What a prediction! Whoa! Oh! With the Heimerdinger. Didn't even make you wait for it. Zillion being thrown towards Kasing. He does love that champion. He played a lot last split. Yeah, I, I also really like how this, even though this is best bottom lane in the West, the goals of this are so different from your goals on Summoner's Rift. Yeah. And all of these players, everyone that I've talked to is like, yes, we're going for the 2v2 kills, 100%. <laughs> There's no junglers, so it's all about what type of, you know, kill lane can you try and whoa, get. Whoa, whoa. Buipo and Hillisang are currently the most active bot lane duo in Europe. They uh -huh. love to go for kills, so in theory, this should be their pride and joy, but we do know that there have been a couple of unique strategies that have come out all across the board, and G2 feels like they already have a plan in mind. Oh, baby, no hesitation here. Now, we've seen Talia already, you know, in Summoner's Rift on competitive games be very effective with anything with a stun to set up the seismic shove. Uh, Brand can do that, but his isn't the most reliable no. uh, first stun to set things up. Usually he wants a targeted one to set him up as well. So interesting, who's going to be able to land the first bit of CC here? But I'm pretty sure that so far in the 2v2s, Talia actually has a 100% loss rate because uh, it's really hard to make use of the work ground that takes up so much space. Also, there are like a lot of minions in ARAM and you can just hide behind them for a really long time to mitigate a lot of her damage. So while I love the brand, I'm still not entirely sold on the Talia just yet. And if Splice do lock in this combo, I think it's a bit better as far as the setup we talked about. Syndra stun very quick uh, in comparison to Talia's seismic shove. So she can actually set up the brand here uh, and Kasing to be able to follow up on that one and look for the chain kills. Plus, they do have a bit better pushing. The Talia you mentioned having 0% win rate in 2v2 so far. Some of the nerfs for this patch, 813 with the micro patch, were to lengthening the cooldown on the early levels oh, yeah. of her threaded volley. Well, I saw Hyunin's reaction when the champions were revealed. Brad <laughs> battles there between him and Kasing, but Talia versus Syndra kind of the difference maker there. But it has been fun so far. Again, side selection 2v2s have been nice to watch, but they don't necessarily have the same weight as what we will now witness. Yeah, this around. is a battle for a title, Pastry. And you get a belt. belt. Yeah, you get a belt, you get a title, you get to walk away from this tournament feeling proud of, if nothing else, you know, even if your region loses, you can walk away as the champions of something. You know, for two locks, Sven and Mithy were called best in the West, double lift and Ole, you know, like, nah, 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 this is the title, this is your opportunity to finally prove it and claim yourself as the best in the West bot lane.
Well, teams and players are lining up. You can see they're on your screen, the belts that are on the line, but you must unfortunately slay some of your fellow regional brethren as the teams will move out onto the Howling Abyss. This is going to be fun. I hope you boys are ready to track a lot of brand cooldowns. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. Already we do see some difference in the strategy here. Double airy for Splice. Uh, they just want to get as many short trades off, tag someone with an ability uh, to get Aerie over there for some damage, whereas the Comet and Electrocute for G2, again, they're relying so much more on the skill uh, of being able to you know, land these skill shots as well as slow someone down to try and get the confirmation on the extra damage. And it seems like it will be a little bit more difficult, but there we go. First damage dealt. Kobe two for two so far on Dark Spheres, but Hyanan answering back as you can see kind of the Idea behind Talia, level one very early when all your ground isn't worked or overworked, can do a lot of damage early on. Right now it is G2's bot lane, they get priority on the wave. That means that they're looking to get that early level two, try and get the level advantage, then force a couple of plays. Uh, I do believe Hyanin started with the W on the, uh, the yeah. brand, whereas Kasing started off with the Q. So both of them will likely be setting up for the stun once they hit that level 2 mark, and then the same will be done for the Syndrome. That's the thing that G2 have to be really careful of, as you were talking about earlier, Kobe. The setup is just so strong from the Syndra brand duo. Yeah, Syndra still yet to put a point in the W for the slow. He's got Q early on for CSing here with the low cooldown, because uh, they don't want to fall too far behind in CS early on as G2 are pushing into the turret. Yeah, looking good so far, but there's level 2 dinged on both sides now. Gonna give them a little bit more options. She does go for the stun second here for Kabe. So, again, that setup where you get the Syndra stun uh -huh. into the brand chain is a possibility. Also remember, as they're CSing under the turret, they do different uh, amounts of damage to minions here than they do on Summoner's Rift, so it is definitely much more difficult. Until you get used to it, and then they're like, oh, it only takes me you know, one shot on the... Uh, the the other thing that's different as well is that cannon minions... Oh! We oh! already got the first CC ignite down, Hyanin. Gets topped by Aerie, but actually not enough to get a Ooh. kill there. That's a big miss for Splice. Yeah, that's a lot of summoner spells used as well. Flash traded for two flashes on the side of Splice. Means that kill pressure going to be heavily mitigated in G2. They could look to punish this as the laning phase progresses, but Splice now hitting the level three, they can go back to base, buy some items. Yeah, and we did see early boots pick up here from Yarnan after he escaped with his life. That will help you dodge some of the skill shots, but again, Syndra Stun comes out so quick, even with the boots pickup, that same thing could be, um, you know, what they're going for next time, and Yarnin won't have the flash for number two. Also see that Kobe has made that back, like you were mentioning, Vedius, these decent cannon waves can make it quite different on when those timings are, but uh, Kasing has not gone back yet, although that's cute. Some biscuits just got delivered to the Splice duo, so uh, gonna have a bit more sustain here. Yeah, we don't have full information on all the minor runes that they have chosen, but the Biscuit delivery should be uh, seen quite a lot in this tournament, uh, especially since they're trying to get all the sustain for the lane dominance and not give up experience with their recalls. Also, the purchase here, you can see Syndra going for just more combat power with the Doran's Ring uh, rather than, you know, the move speed that we saw on G2 side. Everyone again just kind of hanging back. Indeed. Looking pretty strong there at level four now, but once again, teams are just kind of happy to trade farm for now. G2, in that respect, are ahead by a few. Tension begins to mount between the two European squads. And uh, that is a stun that lands, but no follow-up. Okay. Just a couple of blows being traded back and forth. Yeah, so waiting for those summoners to come back up. Individual good shots there from G2. Uh, while we keep mentioning how Splice can set each other up, G2 just straight land theirs outright, so a little bit of harassment there. And they are ahead on minions right now. Even though we believe both teams are looking for the kills, uh, the minions are going to be important to track. Yeah, it's one of those things. Though, if, you know, if you're getting close to that point, mm -hmm. you'll probably just take that win. A lot of the times, they look for kills in the beginning, and if it gets to the point where they're closing yeah. in on 100, then it's just the pressure of this team has to be the ones to force the fight, uh, you know, or else they do lose out on default by the 100 CS rule. It does seem like, again, teams are kind of taking their backs. G2 again have stocked back up. Boots on both now, plus double Dorans. Feeling pretty healthy, especially with that CS lead. We actually might get a 2 for 2 finally in the tournament where we actually see some level 6s as well, which we have not seen yet. Obviously, Brandon and Syndra have a bit of an advantage there. Oh, they certainly do. 
We did though, could use his ultimate to perhaps separate off the two, perhaps kind of set up a sneaky play like that. You can also go back to base and use it to get back to lane super quickly. Note that Kasing actually hasn't spent any of his gold yet, so that G2 do have an item advantage, which they could look to try and leverage. He's gonna go back, probably now's the best time. Oh, oh Kobe though does get caught, pops the barrier, but low on mana burning down. Oh, he's For the brand passive and he gets first blood, but Hyanin still gonna take some, it's not enough oh. to kill him again. Close, but doesn't count unless you finish it off. Even the airy, not enough. And it is G2, ahead in minions and ahead in kills now. Also getting ahead in turret damage, remember that's the other way you can win the 2v2. But Kasing finally gets his back in boots and a second door into himself. Kobe does have an amp term and a few more potions, so maybe gonna feel a bit more healthy, but this is where it gets tricky because you're down in minions, your turret's taking damage, and you can no longer afford to make a mistake where one of you gets killed because you instantly lose the game from that point. Big thing that is a pro for Splice though, because of the Syndra pick instead of Talia at level six, you gain very, very explosive power with the Syndra ult, and that could be a possibility to try and collect two kills at once. You do an ult early, get the balls on the ground, then you go for the stun and try and get both of them at once with the same stun. See how much Yona can get here. Actually does need to pick up a lot of these minions to kind of keep that condition alive. Ladeed also went back to base. Uh, someone has a refillable, so apparently thinking that's going to go a little longer than they might expect, but Ladeed did hold on to his ultimate for what it's worth. Level sixes have now been reached all across the board. Summoner spell still on cooldown, and a stun doesn't quite land from the side of Kobe. Uh, G2 kind of in a better position, given that they do have the heal available on Wadid, but then there is the ignite as well on Kasing. I always question whether or not that's a good idea on champions like Brandon Syndra, because mm -hmm. usually in solo queue, you can never actually get in range to use your ignite. Usually, you don't want to be that close, but here's the cutoff. Hmm. So he actually did take the wall. I was thinking he might uh, forego taking the wall, and just put another point uh, in a basic ability there for some extra damage. Sometimes you can use the wall creatively if you're closing in on the 100 CS or, or tower damage, but not right there. It does feel like teams are waiting for summoners to come back up. Cannon's Ignite still on cooldown. Kobe's barrier not too far away. G2 recognize that they probably have to get a base in if they can afford it. Wadid does go back. He's very quick back to the lane. And again, I think at this point, G2 might actually be settling in to farm it out. Yeah, so Spy should actually let the wave push right now because there's a cannon going against non-cannon, which means that they can close that CS gap just a little bit. Uh, and then once the cannon spawns on their end, that's when they need to look to start being super aggressive, try and force summon a spell, try and sacrifice loads of farm to the turret if they want to try and close this gap between them that is pretty significant at this point in the game. Also might find a good opening for that all-in that we're really expecting from Brand Syndra. But I think again, Kobe still a few more seconds left on barrier. Then we might see something started. Kyanin will not have Ignite for 10, 15 seconds, it feels like. I'm excited though, with all the flashes back up. I mean, whoever gets killed first is probably gonna be due to flashing over the stun or being hit by the stun. That's the big difference. It. Yeah, there's a hit on Zikhan, but he does flash away. Ult out from Kobe, but now he's actually forced to run away. Pyrocosm bouncing back and forth. He's gonna take his relic and be okay. It's two low mages, but no one dead. Oof, all ultimates have been used here, so no surprises left. And still, G2 hold the CS lead, and they haven't lost a member. Depending on how this goes, though, but he's gonna have to last it very well from this spot to keep that lead. He actually gets stunned, might get picked off here. Not enough. That's a lot of farm, though, like... There's, <laughs> G2 are not that far from the 100 uh, We're getting right close! <laughs> All right, so I think at this point, Splice going back. Oh my god, Kobe has a needlessly large run that he did. All right, so I think the plan's pretty clear now for Splice. You probably aren't going to get the turret. You probably can't catch up in 10 CS time. It's time for a really desperate all-in. All right, there's six right here. Hyarnin actually misses one. Next wave. They have to do it next wave, otherwise the game is over, 100%. All right, definitely a telegraphed all-in, but can they do anything about it? No ultimates are available for either side. Seems like this is going to be very tough for Splice to work their way out of it. You're going to have to start going basically as soon as that wave starts showing, though. So again, you can see Splice, they're trying to bide their time. There's a cannon minion wave as well. Oh, there's the stun. I mean, Syndra doing a lot of damage. Good stun. This might be one kill. They need at least the first one. But the stun lands in. Kobe's in tower range. He pops the barrier. Five CS is the count currently, too. Well, did just has to wait for the wave to hit the tower. Well, they could try and pressure him off, but he's going for it. There's two. Yep. Only needs three more. Now the stun does land, but I mean, Kobe can't go under the turret. 
Because they're trying to keep him off. We did. He needs to find a couple of minions to it, snipe. His worked ground is all around the turret wait, 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 already. Look at the farm for splice. Look at the farm for splice. Oh, it's six away. They don't have enough. They need to wait for the wave. How patient can they be? They're trying to keep them off the wave. Three away. Oh, Yarn is Yarn is oh no. It's double guys that they can take it too far. Oh, and Yarnin. He gets the kill incredibly tense. <laughs> I like the positioning. They knew they had no time to work with, trying to force out the last few. But G2, in the end, get the extra kill. Damn, that was close. You know, you can see that Splice were kind of forced into this corner where they had to just zone them away from the farm. And uh, unfortunately, yeah, especially given that they had already lost one kill earlier on, uh, it was definitely an uphill struggle for Splice. And many of the all-ins they tried didn't quite work out. Yeah. This was, this was where it really got intense, too. Once you start to count the CS, only a few more coming on the minion wave, but Yarnin is on the way back, and the savior for G2 arrives. And it's all easy from there, Pyroclasm, and that's basically yeah. just <laughs> it. Outskilled. Oh. They, maybe they shouldn't have even tried to go for the all-in, just because the problem is he also drew tower aggro, so if you just yeah. immediately gone for the wave and then tried to get those last couple of CS, maybe that could have been the way they turned it around, but either way, Spies end up dropping. G2 will be going up against Fnatic next. Well, not for now. That was quite a fun one to kick things off. But the first matchup on the NA side is going to be between the 100 Thieves duo lane. It is Cody Sun and Aframu. It's been an up and down tournament for the boys. But so far, we'll see how they fare against their opponents for this one. It is on Echo Fox, Altec, and Adrian. Quite looking forward to seeing how the Echo Fox boys can do. Uh, I would argue, like, in terms of laning phase prowess, Altec and Adrian, in my head, would have the advantage. They're, they seemed like hmm. pretty young, mechanically strong players, especially. Maybe I'm thinking too far <laughs> in the past when Altec used to play for EG. I mean, Altec's <laughs> still very young, as it turns <laughs> that out. That is pretty far in the past. Years. Back then, he was like a mechanical god. Well, let me update you. Currently, Altec's uh, best champion in my eyes has been his Mundo. And oh, uh, uh, <laughs> the mechanics there, not so intense. I mean, he might pick it here. <laughs> he did also show great improvements in his Vladimir play. So this is a guy who has really embraced the new meta, though. All right. uh, and has played more than the marksman. And Aframu and Cody Sun. Well, Cody Sun has had kind of mixed performances. His game versus Splice was pretty good. Game versus Fnatic, not so good. Uh, he did was that the Alstar game also? <laughs> was that a <laughs> different Alistar game? Was like, eh. um, so, yeah, but we'll see. Don't want to hate on the guys. 2v2, different environment, different world, different rules. And it's all about ideally trying to kill each other. That last game was the first one we've seen actually go to. Technically, it went to two kills, but it was yep. really going to 100 CS. Uh, Champions Canada. <laughs> yes, I think it might have dinged over as a Soraka ban. Yeah. The first order of business. It's, yes. it's pretty funny because throughout Adrian's career in North America, he has been memed on for being a Soraka Janna player, uh, only playing the, the supportive healing shielding supports, even though technically he has played plenty of melee champions, plenty of those beefier supports down there as well. It does seem like a lot of them are getting banned out. Karma again will be banned this time by 100 Thieves. Morgana was also the first band there for Echo Fox, so mm. it's like the bot laners are getting ignored. All right, there's uh, something we've just seen. Syndra gonna get taken off the board. But the Anivia still available, that poppy Anivia combo that G2 ran uh, yesterday, always ever present. Rengar Pantheon also left up and available. That's what I'm looking for, some all-in melee kill, lane, kill lanes. But if the bands are any indication... Oh, <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, here we go! Oh, there's one lock in already. And it's... I don't know. If they just a hover boy. Swap. Also, yeah, though, uh, I mean, they don't have to switch. Uh, yeah. They can switch, okay, but okay. I'll take with the Blitzkrieg yeah, right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you obviously pick your own champion. Maybe he's feeling frisky. Ooh, a lot of teams seem to love Brand in this game mode. Like, obviously, with his uh, three-hit passive when he lands Ooh. three of his abilities, <laughs> the, uh, the the blaze can be pretty devastating. Definitely true. And this is another, you know, set-up champion for Brand. Annie. Yeah. The point-and-click stun, very, very powerful in allowing those combos to take place. However, we just saw in the last match, you know, G2 didn't need a point-and-click to set it up, and they did just fine for themselves, yep. landing skill shots. It's about to get hot in here, boys. Certainly is. Annie is the pick there for Cody Sun. I mean, it's kind of a, the more straightforward version of trying to set up the brand, I suppose. And I think 
Blitzcrank, I mean, despite Brand maybe being prevalent, we'll have to see as mm -hmm. Best in the West continues, but Blitzcrank's uh, a big curveball, I have to think. So I think the issue I have with Blitzcrank is if you want to utilize him, you need bush control. Uh -huh. And when you're one range versus two, obviously that becomes a lot harder to get. Uh, I still think that when the enemy is sieging up towards your turret, there is the potential for you to set up a pick, but uh, having that control over the wave so that you can get in the brush and kind of get behind the minions and run the risk of landing that hook is really important. And when you have Annie Brand, you can just keep that wave pushed underneath the enemy turret for as long as possible. So I'm kind of in the 100 Thieves camp right now, but, you know, Blitzcrank, he is a wild variable that you can never truly account for. Everyone starts to cry as soon as the hook actually lands. <laughs> and they're like, oh, how'd you get hit by that one? Well, Blitzcrank definitely going to encourage earlier kills. So maybe we get it before it's forced by CS this time around. They did swap it around as well. It is Adrian that will be piloting the Blitzcrank in this 2v2. Altec on a pretty well-known bot laner actually at this point is going to be the brand. But. You can see also by the keystones, the strategy, right? The double range, they're going for <laughs> double comet. They want to poke them out. They want to push the waves. But Echo Fox, both electrocute. All wait, in. Wait, wait. As soon as they get the grab, they go for the kill. What's that corrupting potion start on Altec, though? If they're running electrocute, why are they going for this <laughs> sustain build? Well, we just saw Yarnin in the last one with the refillable, and he got a lot of use out of it, actually, <laughs> guess, escaping yeah. multiple times. So learning from the victors already. I guess it's efficient if they're assuming there's going to be a lot of backing. Maybe they're assuming early laning phase is going to be a couple of, uh, uh, a bit of poke. Oh, I like the skinnergy that's going on yeah. between the 100 Thieves as well. Also, oh, nice. We got some rune info, too. A little bit of a biscuit delivery once again. Yeah, we did expect that one. Some early damage to go with it with a Scorch. Celerity as well for dodging some of the skill shots. Uh -huh. All makes sense here. We should see a lot of sorcery first, by the way. Yep. Uh, so you can get um, the possibility of magic shields uh, in addition to mana flow band helping out with harassments. Both good options. And you can already see Hunter Thieves once again pushing up the lane. Adrian's sitting in the brush, but we also now get to see Altex Roots going very heavy on the damage, naturally, with the Electrocute. Also got the and Ravenous the healing. Hunter. Yeah, 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 that's quite interesting. Because uh, you also get that based off bounties too, right? Which you're obviously not going to be able to build a huge amount of. Mm -hmm. so the, the flat amount, though, starting out 2.5%, I believe, uh, should be sufficient for some healing off of that, as well as the Taste of Blood helping out. Adrian could be able to do some true damage there with the Cheap Shot as soon as they CC someone. So far, as far as the early lane has gone, now we've checked through the runes. As expected, the double range is pushing a little bit faster here. And the Relentless Hunter for the out-of-combat move speed <laughs> on Adrian as well. While he's moving back and forth right now, trying to fake out when's he going to throw the, uh, the hook here. That could be what they actually look for with the opening. Right now, fighting over the relic, though. Got a boots four as well. First hook does miss for Adrian, but only barely as he fished for Cody. Again, they'll feel like Fox just going to have to kind of bide their time. I mean, it really is on Adrian, it feels like, to get things going. If he can land a good hook, it's pretty easy there to try and convert for a kill. And then once you get hooked, you can tell a lot about a human <laughs> by the way they react when they get hooked. Me, personally, I immediately flash out. <laughs> However, you can also, especially if you're someone like Aphromoo on Annie, throw out both of your spells, yep. land the stun, then you judge the situation if you're actually in danger and if you need to blow your summoner. Yeah, the, we're the kind of people, Kobe, that just panic flash. It's just like, uh -huh. even if they just land a single hook when no one's around, it's like, ah! And then you're out of there. It's a safety. Because if I play support, I've been auto-filled, and I'm not going to. Adrian. Oh, Ooh, swing and a miss. He sucks. That's annoying. Uh, <laughs> he will just have to back off from that one. That's two out of two that I believe have been missed, Pastry. That is keep true. track of them. All right, I can do that. Remember, it costs a lot of mana to throw these hooks, too. Uh, Blitzcrank doesn't get Wait, too Wait, you have mana open. on this on this game mode? Yeah. I've never ran out of mana on this game mode. I've literally never That's ran That's because you all-in level two every single <laughs> game. <laughs> it's all of my strats, Pastry. Oh, you don't have right. mana. You don't have manners. I mean, you're just... <laughs> what do you have, Eddie? <laughs> A sparkling Winning teams at referrals. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, back to this one. It does feel like, again, the last hitting prowess is pretty strong here for the 100 Thieves duo. Up healthily with Adrian once again. He already missed a third one that I just caught. Trying desperately to hit something that's not a minion or some air. He's zoning. He's asserting his dominance over the 100 Thieves. Also still got three pots left. Here we go, here we go. Back oh, that's Palfist. 
Still looking for the next hook, does land one there, oh, but Ace Chris no. oh, no. down low. Passive kicks in this first one for Afro. Ah, that's the kind of the, the very disappointing uh, <laughs> result to uh, Blitzcrank Golf. You know, you flash in there, you get your hook, you're looking for the big kill, and you just get poked down and, and <laughs> run back. Now, now it's a very uh, sad situation here for yep. Echo Fox. Down in CS, down in kills. He Long flashed in. He literally <laughs> flashed into Valley Range of Annie and he said, Stun me! And that's what they did. Yep. Uh, and they insta killed him. With so. passive, not enough. Hooks cost too much mana, but he did hit one, so <laughs> it might be worse. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we're talking about the different reactions. Uh, Afro moves are very cool, calm, and collected. Yep. Oh, no. No one saw that. It's fine. <laughs> we saw it and it's on the cut. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell them my secret. <laughs> uh, <laughs> of these have also gone back. Double Dorans and uh, some dueling crystals here. A ruby. There for Afro and a Sapphire there for Cody. Oh, that's a rush of Sork Boots for Altec. Yeah, they need to get two kills very quickly because, yeah. as you said, huge CS lead here already, down the kill. And yeah, you're going to get more move speed with the level two boots as well. So maybe that's the difference between him dodging Cody Sun's Q or something like that and getting into position to follow up. It's, uh, it's definitely going to be slim pickings, though. I also feel like Annie with Flash at six is like a free kill no matter what. So time is kind of ticking here for Echo Fox. We'll see how they never get though. Adrian again gonna line it up. Up there on the drive. Oh, nails it! Afro there flashes out after. Does get power fist of it again. The stun comes back around. Still with pretty tanky, but probably not tanky enough to live through this. Passive gonna prop. Auto is there. It's actually not enough to get a kill. That was the opening though. Echo Fox, they jumped on their level six advantage with the extra brand ultimate. But even with the brand ultimate advantage, Aphromoo is able to get out of there in time, and they don't jump on the small window they had. That was probably their only remaining kind of spike that Echo Fox could really go for. Yep. Because uh, now level sixes have just been hit for both Aphromoo and Cody Sun. Flash is available for Altec, but the Ignite is down, the heal is down, and while the same can be said for 100 Thieves, yeah. they don't really need to force anything right now because <laughs> they, they're in the, the power position, you know, with the farm lead, with the kill lead. Everything's looking up for 100 Thieves. Feels pretty good. Uh, honestly, they're just going to be able to poke down Echo Fox, too. It's not like Echo Fox have a poke advantage where they can soften him up yeah. before Altec gets to go in for the flash, either. We can see again, just last hitting very well. Cody expertly ordering down these creeps. Afro trying to hold on to his stun, which is like he's no longer killing them. And again, Adrian could find a nice hook here. Level 6 will help somewhat, at least with some damage. Does tick over now and rev up the ulti, I assume. But pressure is certainly mounting here. 10 CS lead still here for 100 Thieves. What do you think the strategy talk right now between Alltech and Adrian is? Right. <laughs> I think it's, win. I think, it's, <laughs> I think it starts with the word yo and ends with we got to go in. <laughs> every, <laughs> every conversation with pastry starts with yo. <laughs> we got to go in. OK, 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 wait, wait. Ignite is up in a second. All right, they got the Blitzcrank Silence to yes. work with as well. Go. This uh -huh. is it. Fox, if you're going to do anything, it's come up to that point. Adrian? Oh, misses. Oh. Still. And more hooks. That's how you win. Can wait about 10 more seconds. We'll have it back up, but only uh, four waves or so to go. With that 20 CS now away from 100 for 100 Thieves. But I don't think Afro's flash will be back in time. I bet you Afro's going to go for the kill. Adrian's oh. going against the silence, but the Timmy's is down. The boots going burning down. He misses another hook, and he goes down. Cody Sun. Takes him out. Adrian just ran it down mid. He just. <laughs> There's only one lane. You can't play with that much. What was he doing? What other strategies are available <laughs> in Aram, Bettius? <laughs> but he, yeah, he tried to go for a hook. Mid. He ran into the Annie ultimate. Just look at it. Oh, this is the first kill where, again, he flashes in to get the knockup onto Cody and yeah. it doesn't quite work out the way they wanted it to. And then the next kill was pretty much Adrian doing the same thing. Blitzcrank, we could understand the idea, but execution wasn't quite there for Adrian. Yeah, focus fire right here. Easy for 100 Thieves. Stun locked him. Even dodged the hook as well. And Altec tried to get off uh, his own brand ultimate, but too little too late. Look at that, though. Almost no reaction for 100 Thieves. They knew they had that one in the bag. Yep. Easy life. Moving on to the next round. I mean, that's the plan at this point. They will, of course, play Liquid. We'll see if they, or Liquid, will be the duo that faces EU the title of best in the West, but we still have more to come. Uh, I get the feeling that, again, Brand 
gonna be pretty popular Does in this game way. mode. Yeah. These were the this was just the entry level uh, duo fights. Now, now we're moving up. They get to play <laughs> the rank one from both of the regions yep. to see who actually gets to move on for the important match to decide between EU and NA. Well, it's time to go back to the EU side of the bracket. We see that G2 picked up the win, and as a result, they will be pitted against the number one seed from Europe. Let's check in with them right now. It's Fnatic. Maybe not as you know them. We'll check in with the bracket first, actually, as you can see, with the wins there for 100 Thieves and G2. G2 versus Fnatic. Of course, the number one seed there for EU. And Liquid versus 100 Thieves to play for all the moments. Battle of the Kings. Belts. Such a long legacy <laughs> between Fnatic and G2. This is the All ultimate. right, here's the Fnatic boys. <laughs> Whipper and Hillersong. Again, maybe not the person you expected, but certainly been performing very well for the team. Yeah, the rules are the bottom lane that has started the most this split for that team yep. is your bottom lane that plays. Well, on the other side here, Hyanin and Wadid back after the victory over Splice. Can they topple those Kings videos? Well, who knows? It's all about the Battle of the Throne, you know? The long legacy that they've had between each other. Will a new dynasty be written? Today we will find out. Uh, it's going to be a fun one. Uh, I know that Hyanin and Wadid always get excited to play against Bwipo and Hillisang. Hillisang is super aggro. We heard from Doublelift uh, the, uh, earlier in the day talk about how uh, annoying he is to play against. Mm -hmm. And uh, funnily enough, Wadid loves playing against him because you know it's always guaranteed to be an exciting lane. He doesn't ever have to play into a boring lane. So I hope we see a lot of killing stuff. Uh, at least that's why I look at <laughs> I hope we see a lot of killing stuff. <laughs> Definitely a sentiment shared by many in the audience as well. I think a lot of people were rooting for the Blitzcrank last time around. We'll see if we get some more mages. Well, what a mage bans right now. Swain, Pantheon, Talia, and mm. Brand all taken away. See, Oh, and the Heimer ban. Have to respect it from, from Hyanna. I reckon the hidden OP is actually Nocturne in this game. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, oh, you hit that boy. level 6, the one-shot power, he's pretty, pretty strong. Honestly, even before level 6, Spell Shield uh, and the all-in is very threatening. It is! Uh, and don't go Lethal Temple, though. Okay, All yeah, electric accurate. Q. All electric. All right, we'll have to see, though, because uh, essentially a dark timeline is upon us because a lot of mage bands actually have a Scion ban against Whippo here. Mm. But uh, a lot of supports were left up. So we'll see if a team wants to opt into that or if it's all action here. Which I want some variety. Lock yeah, that yeah, yeah. fiddlesticks in. We can keep on hearing about fiddlesticks is so broken right now. Just take <laughs> Aftershock and you can't die. <laughs> is that what you've been hearing about fiddle? That's what uh, I've been hearing. <laughs> or oh, this will happen as Siana has already locked in Morgana. Ooh. How good is your Lux lock? Aren't, aren't Lux and Morgana sisters? I don't know. Close before. enough. <laughs> <laughs> they both bind. That's the same, right? Oh, all right. Well, that is the combo there for G2. Morgana and Lux locked in side by side. This would be quite the lane from Fnatic. What? Oh, my God, he's getting it. Yeah, it looks like. Oh, damn. Okay. This, this is also on the micro patch with the small nerfs to Pike, where uh, they did nerf Tanky Pike. Uh, so they really encourage you to, to build more attack damage. And so if he does go for a DPS Pike and actually starts buying long swords, uh, then it'll be very interesting as far as the all in goes. All right, well, it's double melee versus double range this time around. We had melee range versus double range in our last game. I mean, it's one of those things where I would give Fnatic Spotlight an edge in this style of tournament in a lot of matchups, <laughs> but I feel like they've made it quite hard for themselves here. I mean, there's the wind wall too to help with that. Mm -hmm. uh, and because Lux and Morg are so squishy, uh, if you do land a single hook, you can choke them out very quickly. And I think a lot of people underestimate how much damage Pike actually has in a couple of early levels. So I think the responsibility is on Fnatic to be super proactive in the early game. Plus, how much damage this Fnatic uh, composition can actually heal back up or block with the Yasuo shield. Um, you know, Pike, after you just get out of vision, uh, can actually get the better of you after a trade has already happened. I do have to say, minions are going to be super important in this matchup uh, because that is going to allow a lot of the mobility from Blippo and Fnatic as well as uh, blocking the bindings from G2. So I want to highlight that the moment they got into the game, G2 were did in all chat types XD. Uh, yeah, it's definitely an XD bot lane. If it works, it's the greatest bot lane ever. But if it doesn't, that's like in your game, you're like, oh, report Yasuo for picking troll bot lane. But is it the best in the West, Fedius? That's what we're here to find out. As actually maybe an early recall for Whippo. Didn't like losing a couple of his health to an early dark binding. Actually, it was a light binding, perhaps. I can't tell based on the did, If left. you want to troll people, you spam laugh yeah. on Lux, not base. This is the wrong. He's got manners. Double rainbow? Looks like what does it mean? 
The real the question is, is apparently. what transformation is he going to take? With Wait, no, no, skin? he's not running the uh, elemental life. No, he's doing, no. Uh, the the dragon one that came out not too long ago. Excellent. The lunar rebel. Yeah. There you go. Oh no. Oh no. It's already started quite badly. Tornado's gonna miss as well. Heal sung taking damage. That's all right. Go for the bush. Heal it back up. Oh, they actually have the push on this. That's I guess. Wait, did Hyanan and strategy here would fight. start with double uh, binding? Binding for Hyanan, E for Wadid. Oh, okay, so they don't have like maximum wave for just yet. No, Yasuo actually pretty good at level one as well. Yeah, looking for full harassment here, absolute focus with the Scorch as well. Hyanan throwing out constant bindings, getting used out of uh, the airy. And exact same, I believe. <laughs> there for Wadid as well. The crit Oh! Oh! Pike does get the hook in for a little bit of extra damage. And again, the double melee is sustaining pretty well for the early levels here. Uh, as well, we had Resolve for both of the range champions here for G2, taking Chrysalis for the early uh, health uh, for the beginning of this match to try and avoid getting 100% into zero, even if they do get hooked. All right, well, I think things are gonna have to calm down here on the Fnatic side. They've done a good job pushing in early, but now that levels have started to tick up and the wave is gonna push back, thanks to that cannon creep, Done and also gets his relics, so Wufu probably can't afford to play quite as recklessly. I, I take it all back. He's going straight in. Cleanses off, actually. Ooh. That's a big summoner spell to use because Exhaust is still up for the bid. That if uh, Fnatic try to go for another all in, they do have that uh, damage reduction available on the side of G2. Yeah, that was a lot of minions he was trading into there. You can see Wufu, as soon as he proc the Conqueror, he was thinking about going for the all-in, and that's why he used Cleanse, but backed out tremendous amount of minion damage, focusing him down, and nothing left to uh, block the follow-up. Well, it does have level three as well, so access to Wind Wall now available. And now is when it starts to get a bit annoying for the melee side, right? The potions have been used. Uh, what did has actually already gone back for a refillable potion, as he anticipates he's going to have to bake a few more trips back to the fountain. Whereas G2 still have a uh, potion each to their names and can harass you at the turret while you're trying to farm. Wiggles up. Again, going to try and clear this wave as best he can. But this turret is uh, very different to the ones they used to last hitting under. Yep, it's one hit for those. Looking for the stun, but the Black Shield's nice. Does get the hook in onto Wadi. They're going for the all-in. The tornado is down. The ignite already used and exhaust traded in. Wadi, that thing's actually dead here, but he flashes out. Oh! With with a life binding catches him! And that's first blood for Hyana. Now Hilasang ignited up. He does have his flashy phantasm away. Oh! Hyana <laughs> looks for it. But instead is the hook, not into Torrent Range. The life binding almost caught him as well. Nice couple of flashes there at the end. Oh no. One more kill. He wanted the relic too bad, I think. Instead stolen by Wadid. Whew! Tension building up between these two teams. G2 are able to find that first kill. Bwipo, if he'd had the cleanse, they might have been able to find that kill, but because he used it earlier to go for that hyper-aggressive trade, the loss of Summoner Spell meant that G2 were able to come out on top. They had more damage, and now the pressure falls on to Fnatic's shoulders. Such a great late flash as well from the Lux. The Bwipo gonna clean these up. Doing a pretty good job last hitting here, but hmm. still almost 10 behind. As he gets some more. With these refillables, do you think Fnatic are going to wait for the level six to get the Yasuo all off of one of the Pike uh, pulls and then have Pike reset to try and get two kills Maybe. for themselves? They only only need one more. Or, I mean, G2 has the has the other kill, so they can't give up a kill yeah. while they're going for it. I mean, the problem is Hillisang's only level four, while both of uh, G2's members have already reached level five. So I think if Fnatic are relying on level six, it's going to be really difficult. And we've seen that that Black Shield can be pretty obnoxious uh, when it comes to landing this hook as well. So uh, I'm still kind of have my bet hedge towards G2. And even when they hit level six, like Morgan's really good into melee champions yeah. with the uh, Soul Shackles. So we'll find out. But uh, Whippo right now is at least trying to get the wave pushed back in. Does have a second Doran's Blade, so he's trying to get the life deal back and get these waves pushing back in. They're actually not too far behind on CS, but we'll be behind overall, just kind of based on that early kill. And I feel like G2, at this point, kind of know that. Playing back, no need to go too crazy. Okay, Whippo even going back. back. Oh, getting mad. It's all right. Ooh, got the cannon. Level five now as well. This song might actually be able to play catch up, but there's basically no way you get ulties before G2 does. Well, they've already got one here for the level six on Kjarnan on the Morgana. Whippo back in time for the wave at the turret, though. Should be able to get his pretty soon. 
Could have a dagger as well here for Bubo. So I think knows that an all in is coming soon. Oh, another root lands in. Great win wall there. Block right. the rest of the follow up damage from Lux. One level six has been acquired. Hillsang is looking for his. Burning off the wave right now. Must be relatively close. Does get the hook, but no. All ball is still the Phantasm. Actually hits with the Soul Shackles down. Oh. They're going for the all in, but Hillsang is going to cut out the rest of it. Houdini's getting low. There's the laser out from Lux. Hillsang oh. goes down. Did gonna push G to his bot lane into the finals. Yeah, Ooh. they didn't even have Pike level six, in, oh. and he's going for the one v two by himself up there. Exposes himself and goes down. Wow, there we can see the setup. This is from the. Uh, I think this is the first kill that uh, Fnatic tried to set up for themselves. But yeah. oh, that binding at the last second coming in from what did allowing him to get the health relic and turn it around. And here you talked about it, Kobe. No level six. Yes, you deny the health relic, but. Shannon used his ulti on the Hillisang that set him up for the, the binding to then land into the full combo. And there's just more than enough damage to secure the kill. Yep, since they got the earlier one, an easy clean up there. I have to say it was surprisingly close to the If he actually got the kill on Lux, there's certainly an opportunity, but like you said, Vidya, Soul Shackles just denied all the fun Ooh. they were trying to have. So G2's bot lane now, two for two. I believe they're undefeated in uh, the two versus twos. And it's quite an impressive performance from the Seed 2 here at uh, Rift Rivals. Well, let's see their opponent back on the NA side of the bracket. 100 Thieves took game two, and as a result, will promote to face the representatives from Team Liquid. You know them well. I'm very curious to see what they play. It is Double Lift and Ole. Will he be given Kaisa, boys, the <laughs> undefeated champion? Does it do anything? I two v two. doubt Kaisa is going to be the big here for an early focused matchup. But we shall see. Well, their opponents, of course, back for round two. 100 Thieves, Cody Sun, and Aphromu. So these guys, wait, what did they draft? They went for the Brand Annie uh, duo mm -hmm. in the last time. And that was a pretty successful combo, but I feel like it was more about the enemy running into them uh, than it was them being the proactive ones. So the question is, will Team Liquid outplay themselves? Or will well, Thieves get the outplay? We already saw one NA Blitzcrank. Double Lift <laughs> is a exceptionally well-known and a Blitzcrank player. Oh, really? As is his old partner, Aphromu. <laughs> the showdown of a rush hour get once the, again. Get in right now. Blitzcrank did it, Blitzcrank did it. <laughs> Duo Blitzcranks. This is the off. ultimate rivalry, you know? Former brothers now going for blood as they battle for the best bot in the West. They want the belt themselves. They want to hold the title, but both cannot hold it. Yeah, it's actually been a long time, too. Double F and Afro have both changed teams here uh, multiple times since they actually played together. And yet, it still remains one of the most iconic <laughs> duos we have ever had. Well, they banded together to take out EU in the grudge match to start off Rift Rivals here. And now they must play each other as the bands Team Liquid using some of the early scouting information, taking out the Annie. 100 days, I think a smart band there. Do take ah, out the Lucian. They banned the pocket pick. <laughs> Double if not going to be able to use this marksman and Lucian. And we're going to have to see who's going to be able to face G2. Look at the, final the round. smiles on Ole's face. This guy, I feel like he has a conniving plan in mind. Mm. He's having way too much fun with this. And just 80 copies of being fat. <laughs> like, I was kidding, guys. I wasn't actually expecting him to pick it. But 100 Thieves are saying, you know what? We've seen your Vladimir. We want you to pick a mage. The, We're happy to play that. The mages have reigned supreme thus far in yes. the two versus twos. So it'd be definitely interesting if Team Liquid still went for our marksman. Well, Brandon Morgana round out the three mages that Liquid choose to ban out here. They're laughing too much. It's too suspicious. Okay, the Venrakan. I don't mind that one either. What will the picks be? Ole is, yeah, he's certainly up to something. I think my favorite uh, combo so far has been the Poppy Anivia. I agree. Yeah, that's my favorite. Going for the 100%. wall smash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. We'll okay. see. So, bit of poke. That's okay. Bit more poke. Yeah. Like a lot of chain CC coming in from the side of Liquid right now. Just a couple of hovers from the side of 100 Thieves. In before Vayne by the way. They're just like, all right, we'll farm it out. <laughs> Is double lift Zareth that. as good as I'm a cutie pie's legendary Zareth, <laughs> though? <laughs> All right, there's Lux locked in, there's Jace locked Ooh, in. That is a lot of poke, my friends. And if that binding lands, you're, oh, you're going to take a lot of damage. I mean, we've got skill shots and stuns on both sides. This yep. is going to be an arms race. 
Yep, there is a Zerus Syndra locked in for Liquid. Clearly thinking about it, had a bit more time to research their opponents, to think about it, watching other duos play. Long range damage, that is the name of the game. Whew. So Team Liquid, I believe this is their first appearance in the two versus two so far for this tournament. That's true. And in this game, they're going for a double poke setup. Playing a little bit more on the defensive side, I wonder if they will try to go for all in or if they're just going to go for the max farm. In the past, when Double Lift played in these 1v1 tournaments, things like All Stars and Invitationals, usually I believe Caitlyn was his go to and like the 100 farm was his typical strategy. Mm -hmm. Wait, he Times was also have changed, my friend. He was also the one that played against Froggen, who yes. did that Olaf thing. Like, he also got baited. Right. <laughs> Snowballs all the way to the fountain. Well, nobody going to be diving this time around unless uh, Cody Sung goes melee form on the Jace. And it is going to be all about these skill shots. One good thing about Xerath, you can hit the Q through the minions, try and shove it, as well as look for that harassment. Syndra stun uh, should be able to set up a Xerath stun. You still have to worry about minions blocking it, but um, definitely should be able to maneuver if that one does land. All right, team's going to move out. 100 Thieves looking for one more win to face G2 who now wait for Europe in the final. Oh, blind face check, double oh, it! That's a classic. Oh, we got slow level one. Oh, Flash already from Afro. It might have been a bait. Afro gonna take some damage here, double it again, still going back through, but Cody very strong at level one here on the Jace. That was way too exciting for level one. That's the kind of bloodshed we want, Pastry, between a lot of range champions, them <laughs> flashing and auto attack. Precisely what I expected, Vettius. <laughs> Aframu immediate flash there in yeah. on the double lift uh, to try and grab him, but doesn't quite get it. And here are the runes, gents, as we uh, may have some reprieve. Mm, so the nullifying orb is taken this time around. Xerath oh. can just auto attack minions and use that passive to get uh, sustain his mana. So he's going to have the extra magic shield. Yeah, I think I like that. Uh, I wonder if Cody, Sun, and Afro went nullifying orb as well. You are against double AP. Couple mana flow bands. Focusing on the mana investment then. I always love Scorch in this matchup. I do like the Domination second as well. Taste of Blood and Ravenous Hunter is a lot of sustain, actually. Yeah, and looks like Afro didn't change his page from the last game. <laughs> Gonna stick the same thing. It makes sense, again, a lot of mages in this game mode, so these are pretty standard things. But it looks like so far, TL skill shot's on point. Getting the poke down, but they will miss the early, early level two. Afro, though, gets stunned. No, they're gonna make him pay for it. Ignite is down. Afro getting on it. He will go down. Now, Cody dove way too far forward. Do one. Has his flash, but no heal. Gonna have to get out of this one. Another stun, perhaps, landing up. Oh, Ooh. good flash from Cody. So, Team Liquid draw first blood as Afro. That level one flash that he used to try and get the pick ends up backfiring on him. At the moment, Team Liquid get level two, they go the turnaround. Cody Sun and Aframu again dying at the level two spike. Aframu had no flash, but he was moving up to try and use the advantage. Then the extra minion dies, and actually Ole gets level two on the Syndra to turn it back around. Afro did get the relic, so we'll deny it from Ole, who's just getting this pushed in, but again with a cannon. Does miss that sphere, but not to be bothered. Is going to go back. Double Lift has already completed his base. So it does have a second Durance now. God, oh. Afro already ruined that wave using his E on it, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is just completely ruined. Yeah, 100 Thieves still lead in farm. Huh. No idea how they pulled that one off. All Cody, about the all in. Cody Sun also, in addition to going the Ravenous Hunter and the Taste of Blood, he has picked up a Rejuvenation Bead for the sustain on Jace. Oh. Trying to grind this one out. So keep an eye on those minions. So they're working it forward. Perhaps a future team at all in. <laughs> I'm a form only on right. that one. <laughs> You're hard trolling now. Yeah. <laughs> team at Jace, that would definitely be new. If it works, we'll see. It probably won't, though. Even if it works, that doesn't make it okay. That's yeah. true, okay. I that. could be like 20 and zero on a Z, and if I build a death cat and win the game, that doesn't mean that the build is okay. Yeah, it can like, anyway. My <laughs> man once told me, don't knock it till you've tried it. <laughs> <laughs> I tried not to admit. <laughs> Was not a fan. Sorry, what? Betty. <laughs> Sacrilege. All right, well, Teal again, gonna try and farm it out. Like you mentioned, Betty, 100 Thieves still pretty close in farm, so Maybe another all in stun. coming through. Stun oh. is nice from Double Lift, but no follow up. Afro Remember, on point with the shield. Double is the only one with a flash left in this game. So he could flash on a target if Ole sets them up uh, with a Syndra stun. Oh, Double can just flash over minions to land the Zara stun and combo it. 
you know, try and chain CC them. But that's where you're flawed because Double Lift, he hasn't used his flash because he doesn't know how to. We already <laughs> covered this, gentlemen. Oh, old meme. <laughs> that one is stale, bro. <laughs> Is Double Lift the only player so far to buy a trinket, by the way? I just noticed here. Nah, nah, nah. We've seen a couple trinkets so far in this. In uh, the games we've seen today. I yeah, mean, no, it's okay. Yeah. Well, he did buy No one else. He got the correct one. The sweeper yeah. you get to use. You can see the outline in the brush and get a little bit of use out of it, at least. Looks like another base hit for Cody. Gonna make. Ooh, that was a fairy charm to join in with his rejuvenation. I'm not sure where he's going with this. I'm pretty sure you can't build Philosopher's Stone anymore. Uh. Is that cries of anguish over <laughs> philosophers? So uh, the serious answer is he's got plenty of inventory space. You know, you're not going to fill up and max out on items. <laughs> so you can get value out of just the that's same true. item. That's true. He's buying it for mana regeneration. That's what it does. Now final proc, by Whoa. the way. Double is a little too low. Afro almost ready with the flashback up 20 seconds Ooh. away. And he's halfway to level six. Even if they killed off that whole wave, he wouldn't quite be able to get his ultimate. But that would definitely be the way they would try and snipe down double lift too bad too Ooh. far away Ooh, did not cancel that base unfortunately for ole but when you think about level six is too right uh Zaras level six does damage but it's probably not the most effective in terms of like all in if you kind of have a pretty good trade and you chunk someone out low then maybe you can use it to clean up the end of the fight yeah. uh but jace doesn't really have an ulti uh, so you can more damage. He does Max have <laughs> more damage. I Max out Q. <laughs> yeah, you're. Is he, has, he has, Yeah, he has taken a point in W. Okay, okay. Ooh, double lift again, taking too much damage. Dodge the light binding, but the stun lands in. Ole gonna try and go at solo, but a little rough as Afro also has his ulti ready. Double lift has to dodge this out. The ignite is there. Probably not enough to kill double lift. Go snipe. Trying to prep him for it. If Cody Sun lands another shock blast. All right, how many of these minions can they actually get? Because currently Team Liquid are ahead in minions even with this giant wave at their turret. Yeah. So they don't have to put themselves in danger when going for these ones. Double Lift is just desperately trying not to get hit by skill shots right now. Does it level six. Olay also ready with his ulti, so the window 100 Thieves have may have just closed. So that was a lot of farm that was just lost. Oh, oh. No, he's in! Oh! Afro flashes out, Olay already burnt his ulti. Cody coming back out. But I feel like Double Lift messed up because he flashed and he misses E. Don't know if he cast. I'm, yeah, I'm not entirely sure if he. Uh... Let's go for a replay. Can we get a replay? Slow. He mo. did go for the aggressive right, flash. Right. So yes. how about that? Called it. Also does get a stun onto Cody. Olay with a long range stun, but no mana and not very much health left either. Olay's going to be forced to go back to base now. Yeah. And Afromu kind of. Ooh, that's actually. All right. We're not going to get a replay. Okay, but. But we went back and I did an investigation. He, he checked the tape. Flashed. He tried to cast E and then he canceled the anime. What? The <laughs> canceled his own E moving after. Wow. God damn it, double it. <laughs> so, that's like one of the easiest combos ever. <laughs> the, the target was already stunned and he just has to press E. He's got those two. marksman instincts. Always trying to attack. Yeah. Move. Attack, yeah. Move. <laughs> Stay mobile. <laughs> All right, well, Double Lift is at least keeping his mana up thanks to the passive. Ole did go back and refresh his mana pool as well. And going full damage, no boots here Here for Ole. It's an extra amp tome right now. Yeah, you don't need boots. Uh, you're only going to be pressing R anyway. So, uh, and your target will almost certainly come to you if you're playing it well. Level 6 being completed across the board. Afro will likely go back to Beisu. Maybe pick up a little bit more sustain. Back to Beisu. Right, Afro gets the relic. We'll have a check-in with uh, just what Kobe was investigating earlier, though. You can see Double Lift there in the bottom left. Oh, they lied to me. He just said he wouldn't be able to give me <laughs> Oh, play. Oh! But yeah, he uh, went up, he uh, tried to E, then immediately... <laughs> dude, yeah. He failed. Too many inputs. He's too good at the game. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's the opposite of what he is when you flash and you use the wrong ability. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we can debate... All we like here, but TL are at least getting some push here under the turret. Again, still up in CS, but not by too much. Will be better as this wave goes down. Should be able to get all of these here. Cody, though, doing well poking out. I mean, Team Liquid still have a up. pretty healthy, like, CS advantage, and they're doing a good job of zoning 100 Thieves away from this farm, so they don't actually have to go for any more all ins. The pressure kind of falls onto 100 Thieves, and they don't even have a kill yet. So Team Liquid just yeah. have to be patient for the time being. Four CS can be uh, made up pretty quickly. That's fair. 
Also, you have Lux ulti. I wonder if it's at a point where Ooh. you can actually just one-shot the wave. So before it even gets into the lane, it's done. Oh, stun lands in. There we go. Ulti. Using the ulti, that should be enough. Double lift though. They he's just gonna drop the kill. He didn't do it. The laser's gonna miss though. Cody trying to chase him down. Ooh. Dodges the next Q. Ole does get the relic. He's double him. Gonna try and snipe his old lane, buddy. Hey. Everything misses. Oh, the stunner was a bait. No, it wasn't. Afro Moo <laughs> dodges all three right there. Making double lift whiff. Oof. A lot. Wait. No, like barely any summoner spells were used. A lot were unavailable. Ole did flash. Uh, but it looks like that Ignite is actually still up for Afro Moo. He's poised to keep the pressure up. They now actually have the CS lead, even though there are more minions available for Team Liquid. And TL, they can't afford to base right now because that CS gap will just build too much. Yeah, 10 seconds till Ignite for Ole is back up or thereabouts. Double if continuing to get poke. Mana bars also running low here. This is close, boys. 91 farm for the side of 100 Thieves. Oh, it's getting exciting here. At first, you just throw everything. Oh, Double went back to base. Yeah, Ole's trying to clean up the CS while he's gone, and he gets a big clump there. Wait. Tied up, 94. No, no, no. in this wave. It's, it's not all, enough. One more minion. One more minion. That's all they need. Double if to go back. He's going to get there in time. I mean, they have to all in immediately. They just need one wait, kill, wait, though. Wait, wait, Chill will get the win off of this wave. Afro, do something! I have to go with something here. It's so close. I've got one more left. Nine, Somebody kill nine, that CS! Nine, Somebody nine, kill it! Kill it! No! Oh, the oh, it. Oh, oh, got the he kill. just get it! Oh, oh, one oh, CS away! Oh, my God! And they go for the champion kills! <laughs> you are my 100th CS, Afro. <laughs> my goodness. The most After all this <laughs> time! <laughs> oh my word. So this is the level two, right? Ooh. Where Afro, he didn't have the yeah. flash. But this isn't the bit, best bit. Kobe, let's talk about this. Okay. Talk me through it. <laughs> Not when, this bit. When he's running this bit. This bit. Away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, different bit here. But 99 CS for both sides, and yet they're focused again. Oh, he on the the power shot. It's like we said. Oh. Double if they're with the very end of the queue on Zareth. Finds Cody's son, and they're going to move on to meet G2 in the final. <laughs> Already saw the matchup today. It was an anticipated one. This one, I think, just as, if not more, anticipated between the two sides. I got to say, there were also some good skill shot dodges on display in this one. So I'm definitely excited for the finals. I mean, double lift, you know, not much of a mage play. Although it did okay on the Xerath, but certainly you can see the individual movement and skill there. Helped a lot in all skill shot 2v2. Yeah, it was a really fun matchup to watch at the end. Uh, there was a lot of farming in between, <laughs> uh, but now we get to see the ultimate 2v2 battle. Yep. G2 Esports versus Team Liquid. Uh, early in the day, G2 kind of had a one-sided game versus Team Liquid, but now Doublelift can get a bit of revenge. Uh, he can ban away the Heimer. He can force 80 carries to be played. He can say, come on, fight me fair and square here. And Heimer's going to be like, no, I'm going to play Karma instead. Uh, I mean, Doublelift has wanted to take this title of best bottom lane in the West from G2, but he wanted to take it from a different bottom lane <laughs> of G2. <laughs> Unfortunately for Sven and Mithy, you have to make it into the top three teams of your region yep. to be here to even compete, and they were unable to do that. Well, instead, it will be both these teams playing for the victory. With that, we've got the two greatest bot lanes in the West ready to face off. First up on the blue side, it's Team Liquid, Doublelift, and Ole. Nail-biting last game, but they did manage to squeak out the win. Yes, they certainly did, but will they have the same sort of game up against G2's bot lane in Hyanan and Wadid? These guys have not yet been defeated in the two versus two throughout this entire tournament. Mm -hmm. And considering their performance in spring earlier in the year where they were considered one of the weaker bot lanes in Europe, to claim this title would be a big accolade for them to achieve. But then the mage nation attacked. Yeah. And Arnon was king. <laughs> Heimerdinger has been 100% banned against them. Yep. And I expect that to continue. I think so as well, but it is one game only for all the marbles, ladies and gentlemen. Be fun to see how this one kind of shakes out, but we've had a lot of very close 2v2s, I will say. I think sides are somewhat predictably playing a little slower than maybe we would like. There was a lot of all inning in the side selection 2v2s, it felt like, but here, when there is such an important title on the line, teams are playing it very safe and sound, but you only have one chance, as we are gonna get into draft here for our final 
2v2 to determine best in the West. And Liquid, as expected, first ban Heimerdinger. This is what Rift Rivals has been working up towards. The actual Summoner's Rift games, they don't matter. This is everything. I, EU versus NA. I gotta be honest, too. Those belts are bad ass. That's so cool. I feel like that is one of the best prizes that uh, like the players have been able to actually keep and take home. And we've had in a long time. All right, the Xerath also being banned out. They were impressed with the kill there at the very end from Double. But no AD carries have been banned. The Lucian is available for Double if should he want it. I mean, everything on the line here for the title. Only one game. Perhaps you break the pocket pick back out. Perhaps you're counting. You pick the karma. Oh, he actually picked karma. I, <laughs> yeah. oh. I didn't think he would do it. Lame. <laughs> <laughs> karma very good, obviously, in for this sure. matchup, though. Spam out the cues. You get your mantra oh, so no. early. Oh, oh no. no. He actually did it. <laughs> Let's do it! Double lift making a stand for all of the 80 carries <laughs> around the world. He wants to prove in the two versus two finals here that Caitlyn has returned. At least without junglers. <laughs> and without scaling and being important. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty then. Well, Fiddle Six Karma versus Caitlyn Morgana. I don't think we could end best in the West, the battle for bot in any other fashion. He's even taken the normal summoners, it looks like. Flash Heal with Flash Ignite for Team Liquid. The Exhaust on the side of G2, though. And that one, you can go for the Fear early, then as soon as the Fear ends, then you can go for the Exhaust. And it's a yep. long period of time uh, where one of your enemies will be useless. But again, the range is going to be a big deal. That's why people pick Caitlyn. And Doublelift is going to have to use it to his advantage. You talked about all the movement last time around Pastry. See if they can combo this time, because as well, Morgana Binding and the Caitlyn Trap is one of the age-old tested combos. And uh, really sticking to what we'd expect from a duo lane. I think as far as Liquid are concerned, this is the regular old Summoner's Rift lane yep. phase. This is the most standard 2v2 you'll get in the current meta. Fiddlesticks has been appearing a couple times over in Europe. And he's kind of known as a pretty lane win support. Mm. That's kind of his role because of his instant CC. But as you talked about, Kobe, that long range from the Caitlyn uh, will make it difficult for him to get up and kind of throw the harassment out that he would like to. Yeah, especially if a binding lands first onto the Fiddlesticks. Can't move. You get a trap under you. You still can't move. Yep. You're taking damage the whole time. And they're not in range for you to fear. Uh, and it would have to go to Hyarn, and he throws the shield down, tries to protect his lane mate. But think about the drain. If Wadid eats a lot of uh, damage, he can just soak that back up. Uh, and there are plenty of ways for him to just heal himself. And I wonder if he actually puts more points into the drain, because if it's just a Fiddlesticks with, like, base items uh, against a Caitlyn with maybe only a Longsword, uh, don't you think he oh could no. out-sustain him with his W? Yeah, unless, if you're going for the all-in, then you want the duration on the fear. But otherwise, right. I agree with you. Right, right, right. That makes sense. Well, Double does have Barrier not here, which I think makes sense against Ignite and also with Fleet Footwork as we hit already. Uh, struggling a little versus Dark Wind plus Karma Q. Does dodge that next one, though. Killing him a little off as far as the aim there. But uh, Lost City under turret a lot different in this particular map. And oh, the Crows, they're coming. Double lift again. Eating some damage. Now, Caitlyn, again, as with most marksmen, trying to get the control of the wave, keep your autos up so you get the most out of your life steal from your Doran's Blade as well, and try and get that early push. Hyun and somehow dodging that binding. Let's see how again with that first cannon wave here. Yeah, CS should go to the side of G2 here. They're up by one in the early game. Oh, look at that poke coming out from the fiddle. This is what makes him so obnoxious in the laning phase. Just that. Crow bouncing between the two members of Team Liquid. And you have to just keep that gap up while Karma continues to be annoying as well. But look, he's running out of mana pretty quick. Mm -hmm. And remember to focus on the minions here. A lot of these CS are dying while G2 go for harassment. So Team Liquid pull a little bit back. Double lift certainly never want to shy away from uh, CS or 2. Does take the Relic there. As for with D, we usually see Aftershock in actual 2v2 lanes, but obviously once more damage has Comet instead. Oh my Ooh. goodness. Look at that Dark Wind mechanics. did so much work. Nice bounces, and he's maxing Dark Wind first. That's another point into the Dark Wind. Finding gonna miss with D. Oh, he can see it. This Dark Wind's gonna do so much work. The minion wave though arrives. Instead, gonna try and bounce around, but doesn't get any bounces onto some champions. It's all about bird timing yep. here in this 2v2. Big minion wave built up here for G2 as well. See how the harassment under tower does go. If you can line up those bounces once oh. again. Oh, oh. 
Those are brutal. And that's nullifying old down. Oh. How Kamakyo, I believe, did hit. Yes, Hyun and used the mantra. No cannon kill. Double lift is trying to sustain up. Black shield on him, but again, kind of tough in this spot to do anything. And it's actually very interesting how needing two kills completely changes it because the threat of them flashing under the turret to go for the kill on the double lift is not very real yeah. since that would not end the game uh, and they'd lose too much for it. Terrifying, not a bad binding from Ole, but no tower aggro drawn here and does take one shot, but double lift back immediately. Boots plus no magic mantle, so kind of knows what he's up against Ooh, here in the but lane. He has no health pot, so that could be pretty frustrating when going up against all this poke that's coming out from G2. I imagine they'll go back to base pretty soon. They do have a decent amount of gold that they can look to spend. Ole, though, needs to be careful here. He's yeah. trying to freeze away. <laughs> he's actually trying to stop the backs here to delay the item purchases. And he is delaying quite a long time. Can he throw out a binding to stop another? Might be on cooldown. Yeah, maybe with the base as well. So everyone will finally get back away. Hyun and Amptome there, plus a Doran's ring and some pots. We did just some pots and a second Doran's for him. So a lot of extra AP being built up for G2. You can see that they kind of, for once, dictating the pace of this two versus two for the time being. And double left opting for the slow push here. Wants to build up the minion wave as big as possible before they all crush down on the turret at once, and Ole has time to walk back. Ole is back now, though, but as you said, Kobe, G2, still a little ahead there in the CS race. I mean, it's pretty even. Double should get all these, and then they'll be almost all tied up. But it could be close, and again, Wadi doing a nice job moving forward, getting bounces, just pressuring here. Uh, we did now has finally put some points in his drain. Uh, decided not to just go for the E and Q max. He is on his way towards level six. So we will have the ultimate available. The question is, is it worth even using it when you know you have all this wave clear and poke available and you're starting to build up this farm? You also know that TL's duo will never go for an all in. They can't win with this two versus two against a Karma Fiddle. So the fact that they are just winning through farm is probably the, the best yeah. case scenario for G2. When the Kaylin Morgana side losing in farm, oh. that is a bad sign. No, the binding is They might even lose their tower. That's true, actually. It's kind of taking a beating. Cannon creeps here. Yeah, G2 are like, all right, start ordering it. <laughs> Let's see what damage we can get done here. Double its early base kind of costing them here. Too much damage, because again, with Deed continues. He has to base. Oh, that's actually, is he basing? Uh, yeah. Well, this is definitely going to be the last base, because the turret is so low, they might even be able to rush it down. Ole's got to do his best to keep those minions Level back. Level six with Deed. A zoning crow on. let's go. <laughs> he can all oh, he's he's in. It. He goes in for it. Oh, black shield on. Actually, might be oh, for a kill. Oh, 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 look at the turret. Does oh. not get a kill. Ignite oh. burning down, but it's somehow not enough. Woo! That was Double a bit of a throw. It. Oh, he's got ulti. He's not going to be in range and kind of will yeah. block it anyway. Okay, okay. Holy moly. Well, that made it a little bit more exciting yeah. for yeah. the because they kind of had it in the bag, and they go for the kill onto Ole, but he just black shields himself, so no fear goes down. Still, though, the turret almost going to fall for Team Liquid. They have to make something happen soon. Yeah, they really, really do. Uh, the CS discrepancy is pretty huge as well. Double level six from the side of G2. Doesn't mean a huge amount for Karma, but a bit of extra damage, I suppose. Um, but yeah, they're trying to freeze this wave for the time being, try and close that CS gap as much as they can. Better but blind to blind. I, I think the, the plan might have switched to Flash Morgana. Oh, and go for it, perhaps. I mean, we'll see. Keanu with his Flash and Ignite we did with Exhaust ready, but no Flash for himself. He's all like, yeah, there he is. Once the Soul Shackle, Relic is there though, Exhaust oh, is down. It. it might not be enough damage, the Dark Binding comboing back in middle lane, still getting low. Oh. First Blood is drawn, but Double Lift needs to get the other kill. Oh. We did oh. the oh. he go down, the shield, Double Lift taking up the minions, that's gonna be it. Going double Lift goes down. Lift down. Shabang! G2 are the best bot lane in the West. I applaud Double Lift for sticking <laughs> to his guns and picking Caitlyn with Morgana. But Hyonin with the Karma and with Did's Fiddle overpowers NA as EU. Finally, take what? a marquee victory here on Rip Rivals. Yeah. <laughs> Did Double Lift just do that for all of the 80 carries? <laughs> <laughs> he took one for the team, boys. What did he do, <laughs> really, Kobe? <laughs> oh, and now it is time for G2 to be awarded the best bot lane in the West. Well, the 
The bot lane may have moved, but the team remains the same. With that victory, we have our best bot lane in the West for 2018. We're going to throw it down to the commissioner. And I present to you uh, this year's 2018 Rift Rivals best bot lane, best in the West, the bot lane from G2, right here. Woo, give it up, shining it with Deed. Janet, how does it feel to be crowned the best bot lane in the West? Easy. <laughs> Oh, that hurts being from NA. I mean, would he, was this even a competition for you guys? It looked like you kind of dominated. Well, we're just enjoying NA, lul. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, you guys did earn bragging rights. Is there anything that you'd like to say to your defeated opponents today? Not really, no. <laughs> no words, guys. Congratulations again. And for more on this duo from the bot lane, let's hear from the analyst desk. Thank you very much, Avli Yarnin and Wadid, the best right bot there. lane in the West. They are right there on that <laughs> yeah, stage. Right there. Yeah. Hoisting their belts. I mean, hey, they utterly destroyed Doublelift and Olay, who yeah. came through with a 1CS win over, uh, yeah, that over was close. Afro Ooh. and oh, Cody baby. to sneak in there. But uh, EU, man, they win the group stage, win the best bot lane in the 2v2. It's, it's all coming down to that best of five tomorrow. The but let's relive thing, some of the top moments here. As, of course, we watch Doublelift and Ole go yeah. for the kill oh. on the flash list, fiddlesticks. I, mean, I guess they were going for the double kill because Ole didn't torment and soil the guy who was chain rooted. Uh, but then it's probably fitting that Doublelift didn't even finish the kill and it's a Was he just dancing up at the top He there. didn't deal any damage at the end. I think yeah. Oh, and the dance I like came it. out. I like, I like it. it. The best thing that happened to G2's bot lane was his meta change. Like, yeah. they love it. Every single game, <laughs> that is like, yep, yeah, we play mages in the bot lane with Janan, who is better at mages than even AD carries. They even use it here to win every single game. The nice crow spam, you gotta respect the fiddlesticks. I feel like we're gonna know. see they, that. They almost the done, silent but spam is so good. We're gonna actually see that bot lane, though, next time they funnel. They're gonna actually run Karma fiddlesticks. Because that can work in the LCS. Oh, yeah, yeah, it could, yeah. by, yeah, it, yeah, by all means. Yeah. Fiddlesticks have been played a couple times, I think. Europe right? has played a lot of fiddlesticks, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and Karma. Works. Could entirely work. Yeah. I, I do believe that we have the win moments from the remaining 2v2s as well, if we'd like to relive those, the journey to sure. the finals that these teams took, because there's some exciting finishes, to say the least. I'm glad Brand started hitting the ban list, because it felt like we were just going to see Perma Brand, Brand Mirror started it out. Oh, uh, this a, moment. A kill traded either way in this one, and then it came all down to this. The they just had to hit the minions. Brand are. We had a lot of games where if the team would have just read the CS a little better and gone Right, look at the scoreboard. What did you think of this uh, Blitzcrank video? This was, <laughs> this was uh, definitely the worst Woo! performance. <laughs> NA Blitz, baby. Ah, oh, that <laughs> hook, there you go. You almost did it. Ever, you ever hear that trick? You alt to clear the minions, and then you kill the true. Hook <laughs> I got a question. This was actually, I think this was one of the most entertaining games, uh, G2 versus Fnatic. He gets crushed by that oh, relic spawn. Oh. Oh. And the Q, nice Q. I was kind of rooting for the double melee that, you know, with the... Yeah. yeah that would have been but, fun to I watch. But, I mean, don't all in when you're level 5 and they're both level 6. That's a good point. You could have waited. Yeah, I mean, because if you have the ult, maybe you can jump out of... Nah, you're probably dead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're pretty dead. I like, I like where your mind's going, though. You I was like, it, yeah, because maybe you can it. dodge a skill shot with this the jump. This was crazy one Big right one. here. Came down to 99 CS for both teams. Look at that last minion, that would have been the... Right there, that's the way. hit by the turret. And then oh. Afro's, Afro's alt is channeling. That would have also been 100. And the old channeling would have been oh. it. Oh, it was so close down I the wire. I actually think they won 100 CS. I think he just last hit the minion before killing Before Cody's killing dog. him? Yeah, because yeah, I, I just the saw the last hit come in. Oh, it I think they actually just won 100 CS. We spent a lot of time talking about that one. I don't think it was even winnable by 100 Thieves, because if Cody's not tanking the turret, that minion gets a little faster uh -huh. and they win off 100 CS. Sure, turret, so. sure, sure. I don't know if there's anything 100 Thieves could have done Probably unless they got the kills. Dash was screaming Lock Soul, and it was on cooldown. <laughs> he went to the end. Yeah, at the end, but not before that. <laughs> Fool, what are you he talking about? We literally just saw Check him like so. <laughs> it's on cooldown. Before <laughs> that, he couldn't um, have won with it. It's interesting, though, to watch these 2v2 tournaments only because there is no defined best no. way to play the game. There's not enough evidence to really know. So it's interesting to see what these players sure. come in with, both from a champion perspective as well as their rune choices, of course. I'm sure there are things that could have been done more optimally. The whole last hitting under turret gets more difficult yeah. as well. You're guessing who's good on what champions, like the fact that all of the 80 carries were banned when 
Afro and Cody played against played Dublin, Dublin. But then they banned out the mages. Baited to get them into it. Carry, so they can be the mages. <laughs> I, was, I was waiting for Aurelian Soul. You just like push him back That's and come awful. back all the time. <laughs> just do you're it. roaming yeah. again. Bad. Who are you going to go bot? You're, ro you're roaming Run back to your bot, base or CS? and coming back. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, God. You can keep shopping. All right. Well, tomorrow, EU and NA duke it out for the title of Rift Rivals Champions presented by Jersey Mike's. Because NA came up short in groups, they have submitted Echo Fox for game one, and EU have responded with G2. They'll also have the opportunity to respond for games two and three to what NA puts forward. But we already have that game one laid out there for us. What are you guys thinking, one, about that game, and, and two, what EU's approach is here in terms of who they've elected to send forward? It does feel like G or EU wants to start with a win, and G2 is their most controlled team going up against probably the craziest team for North mm -hmm. America. So it feels like they're just yeah. trying to stop Echo Fox from maybe picking up an upset win. Yeah, because I thought if, if it was like the 3-0, they would put G2 against Team Liquid, because that's the highest chance of a win uh, for G2. Right. Uh, and then just put like 100 Thieves versus Splice, and of course Fnatic would then take on Echo Fox, but they're not doing that. So it feels like the control we trust the most in G2. Let's get a 1-0. Question is just, do you put Splice versus 100 Thieves to try and get a, a win? Mm -hmm. Or do you just sack them for the deal? And like, yeah, you, and you that's the only choice the remaining to make after the first one because all three teams have to play in the first three games. Yeah, very much so. But G2, the winningest team in Europe at the moment. Well, I guess you know, we should tied with Mission. Shouldn't yeah. say, yeah, exactly. Super Misfits undefeated. Is there, but also the winningest team over here is still undefeated across Rift Rivals and the 2v2 Gauntlet. That's going to do it for today. So for myself, the cast, and the entire live broadcast crew, thank you for watching. And we'll see you tomorrow for more Rift Rivals. Good night. Because right now, I do think that EU has an edge, and I am so concerned about NA, instead of just being worried about it. Knocked it around the backside. Brox's days are numbered. First blood at two minutes and ten. And look at Whipple oh. now. He's so low on health. Oh, like the flash oh, board. Double lift. Two for zero in as many minutes. He doubles the flash back over. Oh. And Whipple can outplay this one. <laughs> Two for zero impact, running for dear life, and he's gonna stay alive. Whippo falls well, a double kill for the lift himself. I'm just gonna embrace it. And if NA goes 05 today, well, at least I call. Not forced the revive, and they get him too early. But now we're reviving Aeth, and in comes the fight. A one for one so far, the chase down of Perks gets the second. Now this battle with a couple of low health bars, Gankos will drop, but Perks is gonna be taken down as G2 are wiping the floor with him. It's on to the Nexus now. G G2 and O. What if two Camille's E onto each other? What happens? The, world the game will never freezes know. and then Dragon Ball Z starts happening. That's what happens. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, it's close and Rio! Oh, he survives! Oh! Bullet time couldn't even find anybody, and it's gonna be time running short now for 100 Thieves. The kills come through. No way out of this one. Oh, likely until Ole shows up. Can he keep him alive long enough? They will! The shutdown! That's a pretty big kill now for Liquid, but they lose Poe Belter. Impact running away off the side. It's double it against Ooh. the world. One to fall here in the fight. Kassing likely going to be second half. Remove goes right into the stopwatch. And a hundred thieves are committing murder in the river. Also been informed the winning team gets to keep those forever. Ole does get the relic. He's double it. Did it! Fuck, this game is so hard. Going down! Shebang! G2 are the best bot lane in the West! And if NA goes 05 today, well, at least I called it.